From 0 to 10, how difficult is it for you to get out of bed in the morning? Have you ever stopped to think that maybe the problem is not laziness, but your genetics? In today's video, I'll tell you if there really are morning and evening people. But beyond that, I'll reveal possible mistakes in your routine that destroy your morning energy and help you wake up earlier without suffering. Some people face a real battle when they have an important commitment in the morning. They set the alarm to the maximum, ringing every five minutes, and put the phone far from the bed to force themselves to get up. And as if that wasn't enough, they even ask a family member to wake them up in case they go back to sleep. And even so, they still manage to be late. Who can relate? Why is it so hard for some people to get out of bed? The truth is, without you knowing, your brain might be sabotaging you. Sleeping and waking up are basic processes of the organism that must happen every day without fail. To ensure you don't go without sleep or an active life, your brain has an internal clock that starts ticking at sunrise. Even with your eyes closed, the cells at the back of your eye capture the intense daylight and transmit this information to the brain to reset the internal clock. This is where your body's day begins, and for the next 24 hours, the brain has an endless list of scheduled functions to perform. One of the most important mechanisms is that light makes the brain release molecules that wake up neurons in various organs in the body, such as the adrenal gland, which is responsible for producing cortisol. Many people know cortisol as the stress hormone, but this is unfair. Cortisol spikes abruptly as soon as you wake up and makes us more alert and active. In a matter of minutes, body temperature rises, heart rate increases, and the sleepiness that kept you asleep disappears. But as the day goes on, the body accumulates more and more molecules that slow down neurons and create a feeling of tiredness. Cortisol decreases, and with sunset, the lack of natural light stimulates another hormone, melatonin. The famous melatonin gradually increases and signals to all body systems that it's time to sleep. When you finally lie down, accumulated tiredness and sleepiness make you fall asleep. Throughout the night, melatonin and fatigue-related molecules decrease, and with a new sunrise, the cycle restarts and you wake up from your dreams rested, motivated, and full of energy. At least that's the theory. In practice, many people don't feel motivated or energetic when waking up early. Comment below if you also feel this way or if waking up early is easy for you. This difficulty in getting out of bed has an explanation. Although the internal clock is synchronized with the sun's light cycle, it is easily deregulated by other factors. Think about the day you went out with friends and came home at dawn or worked late into the night. It doesn't matter if the next morning is the sunniest of the year, your brain will ignore the light and keep you sleeping later, since you delayed the start of sleep. On this day, your wake-up times, eating times, and even your motivation will be off because of the deregulated internal clock. And that's okay. This can happen occasionally without any risk. The problem is when the clock is always deregulated, making you want to sleep when you should be waking up and vice versa. This is the case for many people out there who can't fall asleep at the right time and are always exhausted feeling like they haven't rested at all when the alarm goes off. Does this happen to you too? What no one has told you is that all this suffering to get out of bed might not be your fault or due to your lifestyle habits. It might simply be your chronotype, which is how your internal clock works. Knowing your chronotype is the first step to never deregulating your sleep again. Although everyone's internal clock follows the same natural rules, including ambient light and your lifestyle habits, it doesn't work the same way for everyone. Sleep specialists divide people into basically three chronotypes. That is, three ways your internal clock can work day to day. The first chronotype is the morning type. This is the group of people who feel better when they sleep early and wake up early, usually with the sunrise. Morning types feel more energetic for studying, working, and exercising in the morning. Exactly the opposite of the second chronotype, the evening type, who prefer to sleep later and wake up later as well, about two hours after sunrise. Evening types tend to feel more sleepy and less energetic in the morning. They perform better in activities done in the afternoon, especially between noon and 4 p.m. Lastly, the third chronotype is the intermediate type, a middle ground between morning and evening types in terms of sleep and wake times and who don't have a preferred time to be more productive. Notice that among these chronotypes, I didn't mention night owls. That's because we humans are a diurnal species. If you work well in the middle of the night, you can be sure that your internal clock is so deregulated that it no longer knows the right time to sleep or wake up. And this will have health consequences, but that's a topic for another video. It would be amazing if everyone could choose their chronotype and adapt it according to their routine needs. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. It's mainly influenced by genetics and age, factors you can't control. Teenagers and young adults are the ones who most fall into the evening type, who sleep and wake up later, while the elderly are in the opposite group, who usually wake up earlier. But it's important to mention that there are indeed morning teenagers and evening elderly, 
and chronotypes can change throughout life. Chronotypes themselves do not affect your health or well-being. But in practice, we often don't have the flexibility to organize the routine according to the chronotype, right? For example, most people are forced to be productive from 7 in the morning. Most of the population, which is when the standard workday starts. This schedule benefits morning types, who are naturally more active in the morning. But at the same time, it's an unfair burden for evening and intermediate types who have to wake up earlier than their body demands. It seems that the saying, the early bird catches the worm, doesn't apply to everyone. The most obvious solution would be for everyone to go to bed earlier. But it doesn't work that way. The internal clock of evening and intermediate types is naturally programmed to function later. Delaying bedtime because melatonin increases a bit later. Even so, by societal convention, these people have to wake up at the same time as morning types and end up owing hours of sleep. And then, my friend, it's on the weekend that they pay this debt when they can finally stay in bed later. The big problem, folks, is that living two completely different routines, one from Monday to Friday and another on Saturday and Sunday, keeps the internal clock deregulated. It creates an absurd tiredness, especially on Monday when we have to get back to the routine. This phenomenon of continuously deregulating the internal clock because of how society is organized is called social jet lag. It's a problem known by scientists and rarely discussed that affects focus, productivity, learning capacity, and health. Increasing the risk of cardiovascular diseases, obesity, and even cancer, folks. But don't worry, there's a solution. Although it may not necessarily be easy to change your chronotype, there are ways that I will share with you to wake up earlier without suffering. But something you need to know before everything is that even being an evening or intermediate type, you can have quality and restorative sleep every day. And now let's go to the tips that will help you have more control over your sleeping and waking up, even being an evening or intermediate type. How to wake up earlier without suffering. I started this video explaining how sunlight is important to reset our internal clock. It might seem like a small thing, but few people realize how our routine keeps us away from daylight. Think about it if you're among the people who leave before sunrise or who may not even see the sunlight because they stay inside a closed room full of artificial lights all day. And when you get home, it stays the same, with all the lights on and watching Netflix until late. So let's change that today. Has the sun risen? Open the curtains and let the light in. Or choose the brightest room in the house to have your breakfast. This way, you start the day stimulating the brain to wake up, receiving a huge dose of light. This is very important, especially if you're an evening or intermediate type, because it tells your body that the day has started. On the other hand, the same light that woke you up in the morning needs to go away at the end of the day to not interfere with your sleep. So if the sun has set, dim the unnecessary artificial lights. A good tip is to lower the brightness of the TV, computer, and phone. Besides that, try switching white bulbs for yellow ones, especially in sleep and comfort. Related areas like your living room and bedrooms? Try to use fewer light-emitting devices, especially two hours before bedtime. Besides light, other stimuli increase alertness and interfere with sleep onset, such as physical exercise, meals, and stress. Seriously, weightlifting and exercises, that big dinner plate, and the task after work at night greatly interfere with sleep, especially if done two hours before bedtime, so avoid them. You can also set aside 20 to 30 minutes a day for a nap. It won't replace the hours you had to wake up earlier, but it's an extra rest that can help you feel more alert throughout the day. If you already do all this, have a healthy routine with seven to nine hours of sleep and still find it hard to get out of bed when the alarm goes off. It's best to see a doctor. Just to make sure the problem isn't something that needs treatment like sleep apnea, insomnia, and genetic syndromes that alter the internal clock. Now there's one tip that I think is the main one. Send this video to your boss so they know there are different chronotypes. Who knows? They might let you start work later. This could make you more productive and everyone, including the company, benefits. Just like the people who watched this video and learned the benefits of coffee beyond keeping you awake. What time do you usually go to bed and wake up? Do you consider yourself a morning person or a night owl? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and found the tips helpful, don't forget to leave a like and share it with your friends. And of course, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new content. Your subscription really helps us to keep bringing quality videos full of information for you. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay happy.